Hi, in this video I want to briefly overview 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Now 2 Corinthians wasn't actually the second letter that Paul wrote to Corinth. Paul wrote at least four letters to Corinth and maybe even more. There was a letter Paul wrote before 1 Corinthians and there was a letter that Paul wrote in between 1 and 2 Corinthians. So 2 Corinthians is at least the fourth letter that Paul wrote uh, to Corinth. Paul wrote the first three letters to Corinth from Ephesus. 2 Corinthians he wrote not, at, not long after just leaving uh, Ephesus. So, again, to kind of give you a reminder of the layout of the land, Paul was in Ephesus for about three years, and he wrote at least three letters to Corinth. You can see just right across the, uh, the Aegean Sea there uh, to Corinth. And then I think he got kicked out of Ephesus. Um, Acts doesn't exactly put it that way, but I think Acts is um, uh, emphasizing the peacefulness of Christianity. And it's not that it, I'm not in, in any way accusing it of, of, of being untruthful. No, I'm not saying that at all. But I'm, when you go in for a job interview, you don't necessarily tell all the, you know, all the people who are upset with you, um, especially if it's not your fault. So Paul, I think, got kicked out of Ephesus and basically told not to come back. Why do I think that? I mean, there are hints here and there, but one of the reasons is when he, when he comes back through, he doesn't go into the city. They come down to him. Again, you might say, you're a very cynical man, uh, but um, I, I'll just leave it at that. You get to decide. I, I, I'm not pressuring anybody to adopt my view. But Paul leaves Ephesus, and he writes Second Corinthians on his way north uh, to Macedonia there, goes up to Troas and beyond. Uh, so, uh, Second Corinthians, written by Paul. Everybody agrees it was written by Paul. Um, there is a little um, kind of strange interruption in Second Corinthians that it feels like it's a foreign body. Some people have suggested that it's from maybe Paul, one of Paul's other letters that's been kind of put into Second Corinthians. That's the part where he says, don't be unequally uh, yoked with unbelievers. I think people are very comfortable with Paul having written it, at least a lot are. It just doesn't seem to go where it is in Second Corinthians. That's not important right now, um, but um, that's, there are lots of kind of issues around the so-called unity of, of Second Corinthians as a letter. So Paul wrote uh, Second Corinthians from Macedonia. That's that arch part in between Turkey and and. Uh, crossed over into Greece, uh, when maybe 56, 57, somewhere in there, 58. And why did he write it? Well, Paul just had this ongoing struggle with the Corinthian church. More on that to come. Paul had had a rough departure from Ephesus. That much is clear. And Acts tells us that Paul had a rough time at the very end of his stay in Ephesus. Um, I think Acts may not tell us everything. We know that Acts doesn't always tell us everything. So, for example, Acts doesn't tell us about the argument Paul had with Peter uh, at Antioch in Galatians 2. So, Acts doesn't tell everything. Um, but we do know that, that Paul ends his time in Ephesus with a bit of a riot going on. And here's what Paul says in, first, in 2 Corinthians 1, 8 and 9. He says, we don't want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, in Corinth, um, and, of course, he says brothers, but it, he means and sisters because they use masculine when they want to include men and women uh, back then in Greek. We do not want you to be unaware of the affliction we experienced in Asia. And he doesn't mean China here. He means Turkey. For we were so utterly, unbearably crushed, we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death so that we would rely not on ourselves but on God who raises the dead. Now, this in and of itself implies that he had maybe a little bit even rougher time than we hear about from the book of Acts in chapter 19. In fact, this reminds me an awful lot of Philippians 1. For me, living is Christ and dying is gain. Paul writes this Philippians 1 while he's in prison somewhere. If I am to live in the flesh, that means a fruitful labor for me, and I don't know what I prefer. I'm hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to die and be with Christ, to part and be with Christ. That's far better for me. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Now, there's debate over where Philippians was written. Traditionally, they say it was written from Rome. I wonder if it might have been written during an unrecorded imprisonment in Ephesus. Again, I'm not the, I didn't come up with this, but it makes a lot of sense to me. I'm not going to die for it. At least I hope I don't. It's not that important. But So, uh, Acts 19 tells about this kind of rough time he had uh, right before he left Ephesus. 
When the crowd at Ephesus heard this, they were enraged. They shouted, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians! This was one of the, where the temple of Artemis was, one of the seven wonders of the world. Uh, huge pillars. It must have been an incredible building. Great is Artemis of the Ephesians! The city was filled with confusion. People rushed together to the theater for about two hours. All of them shouted in unison, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians! They don't even know why they're there. This is a typical mob. Um, but the clerk finally, the clerk of the city finally uh, settles them down. By the way, you can still go see the, the theater. If I'd have been thinking, I'd have put a picture of the theater into this PowerPoint because I have pictures of it. Um, it's been restored. Um, but if, therefore, Demetrius and the artisans have a complaint against anyone like Paul, the courts are open, there are pro councils, let them bring charges against him. I think they maybe did. That's my hunch. If I were to write a novel, I would have them bring charges against Paul. Paul be put in, into jail until he stood trial, and then basically when he finally stood trial, the proconsul saying, get out of here. We don't want to see you again. That's kind of what I, I picture having happened there. I'm not going to die for it, but that's uh, one scenario. So, meanwhile, this is just the, the problem that Paul's having at Ephesus. He's also having problems, as usual, with the Corinthians. So Paul had sent a harsh letter to the Corinthians. It's one that's lost. I wonder if Paul had it burned. Um, I don't think Paul was real happy, you know, about this whole situation. He may have regretted writing it. And he says this, I wrote you out of must... Now he's talking now to the Corinthians. Uh, I wrote you... He, he, this is something he wrote while he was at Ephesus. I wrote you out of much distress and anguish of heart with many tears. Even if I made you sorry with my letter, I don't regret it, although I did regret it. I see I grieved you with that letter, even only briefly. But now I rejoice, not that you were grieved, but because your grief led to repentance. This is not, he's not talking about 1 Corinthians here. He's talking about some harsh letter he wrote in between 1 and 2 uh, Corinthians. Maybe he gave them an ultimatum. Maybe he said something like, you either submit to my authority, authority I, or I will turn the church over to Satan. I mean, I don't know what he told them. But he, he, uh, he basically laid his cards on the table and he said, you either uh, submit to my authority or you guys are, are in big trouble. Uh, he was all in. And uh, he was very nervous. You know, it takes a while to get, it's not like an email message where you can get an instant response. You have to send someone over there with your letter and then you have to hear back from them. Um, and so this, this, this could be a matter of weeks, um, maybe even over a month before Paul would hear back. And so he no doubt had bit all of his nails off by the time he heard back from them. But, but basically the news is good. He gets the news back and they've, they've submitted to his authority. And oh, he's so relieved. But he was really nervous for a while. So why isn't this letter in the New Testament? Maybe it wasn't actually inspired. I mean, not everything that Paul thought was inspired. Not everything that Paul wrote was inspired. And apparently God didn't want this letter to be in the New Testament. Or it would be in the New Testament, I presume. So, that's all kind of background to what's going on when Paul writes 1 Corinthians. What is the basic content? I'm 2 Corinthians. What's the basic content of 2 Corinthians? The first seven chapters largely have to do with this uh, deep kind of cooling down in his relationship between the Corinthians. So, the first seven chapters are very encouraging. I'm going to share some verses with you in a very quick second here. Um, but So, the first second seven chapters are kind of like, I am so comforted. I mean, if you read, look look at how many times the word comfort appears in 2 Corinthians. When I'm comforted with the comfort that we have, and we're comforted, comfort, 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 comfort. Paul is definitely feeling much, much better and comforted now that he's gotten word back that they've actually submitted to his authority. So the first seven chapters of 2 Corinthians are very, whoo, kind of tone to it. Then in chapters 8 and 9, he talks about an offering uh, that he's raising for the Jerusalem church, kind of peace offering. Um, they told him when he met in, uh, if you look in Galatians 2, when he w met with Peter and James and John, they'd suggested he remember the poor of Jerusalem. And so he collects an offering from his churches. It's kind of an offering from all the churches that, of his Gentile churches. He takes representatives. He doesn't take the money himself. Very good practice, you know, so that no one can accuse him of stealing from the till. Um, but each church has their own representative who carries their money uh, to Jerusalem. What he does with it, we're not sure. Maybe he uses it actually to uh, to pay for the um, the sacrifices of the men in Acts 21. Read it. Um, but he's collecting an offering, and so chapters 8 and 9 have to do with that. And then the tone changes really strangely when you get to chapter 10. I mean, you, for the first seven chapters, you felt like, okay, everything's good. But it's like, did he get new information? 
Did he suddenly find out that they aren't as submitted to him as he thought? Because chapter 10, he goes ballistic again. In fact, some have suggested that chapters 10 through 13 might actually be a fifth letter um, to the Corinthians uh, after he heard back that actually they weren't as as much behind him as he thought that they were. Um, others think that he's just addressing a different part of the Corinthian church. You know, that chapters 1 through 7 address one part of the Corinthian church that are with him, and then chapters 10 through 13 uh, uh, address another part of the Corinthian church that aren't um, with him. But anyway, in chapters 10 through 13, he goes into a very uh, vigorous defense of his authority. Um, but there's a there's a kind of a desp- almost despondent tone to it. Um, he, he says, "Am I not an apostle? You know, I don't I don't think I'm any bit." Wait, that's he says that in First Corinthians. But he says, I, "I don't think I'm any bit inferior to these so-called super apostles that you all think are the best things since sliced uh, manna, or you know, or whatever." Um, so uh, he says he talks about uh, being taken up into the third heaven, uh, a spiritual experience he had. Um, to basically show, you know, do they have experiences? I had a pretty significant spiritual experience in where I was taken to the very presence of God. We learned some biographical details of Paul in those last uh, four chapters there. Well, let me close this video with some great verses from 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians is, is a, it's an interesting book because, um, you know, it's it's not one of the kind of celebrated books of Paul. I mean, it's it's scripture, it's inspired, it's great. But I mean, it's not like people are constantly saying, hey, you should read 2 Corinthians. Uh, but there's some really, really significant gems uh, in 2 Corinthians. So how about this one? We have this treasure in clay jars. That's my flesh, my fragile body. We have this treasure in jars of clay so that it may be clear that the power that we're doing, this extraordinary power you're seeing in our ministry, you can see that it belongs to God and doesn't come from us because where is power going to come from this weak flesh? We are afflicted in every way, but we're not crushed. We're perplexed, but we're not driven to despair. We're persecuted, but we're not forsaken. We're struck down, but we're not destroyed. We, it seems like we're always carrying around the body of the death of Jesus, but we're doing it so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. Whenever you're discouraged, read this passage in 2 Corinthians 4. You see, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward body, our outward nature, even though outwardly we are wasting away, our inner person, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. This slight momentary affliction, and no matter what, no matter how bad a thing you're experiencing in the light of eternity, it's a momentary affliction. This Light and momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory that is beyond all measure. We are not looking at what can be seen. We are looking at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. Isn't that incredibly encouraging? So if you're ever discouraging, if you're ever discouraged, read 2 Corinthians 4. There's, here's some other verses that I'll end uh, with. Again, great verses in 2 Corinthians. It's kind of like, that's in 2 Corinthians? How, how? Why haven't I heard more about 2 Corinthians? We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each may receive a recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Well, that's maybe that's not as quite as encouraging, but it's a key verse because it shows us that even as Christians, because he's addressing Christians, isn't he? He's talking, he includes himself in this. We all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And uh, I do think it's quite clear that Paul believes that Christians need to demonstrate the fruit of the Spirit. Um, that it's not just a, uh, I can live however I want now that, now that I have my uh, fire insurance. That's not the way Paul thinks. We will give an account. Of, uh, not, it's not something to fear because the Holy Spirit will give us the strength to be the people that God wants us to be. But uh, this is a, a clear theme in Paul's writings. Um this is what I what I was thinking of when I was talking earlier. If anyone is in Christ, new creation. By the way, some people get upset about versions that don't say, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Um, that's not what the Greek says. So don't get all upset um, at some of these new new translations. All the Greek says is, if anyone is in, if anyone is in Christ, new creation. That's what it says. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. 
See, everything has become new. All of this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Of course, Paul's talking about himself uh, having a ministry of reconciliation, but I think it's a task for all Christians. All of us are ambassadors for Christ. All of us have the ministry of reconciliation to be part of the reconciling of the world back to God. That's our job. In Christ, God definitely was reconciling the world to himself. In Christ, God was not counting our trespasses against our, us. For our sake, God made Jesus to be sin. Jesus who knew no sin, God made to be sin, so that in Jesus we might become the righteousness of God. Great verse, and I'll discipline myself from going into some of the debates over uh, what it means. Uh, this has been a quick bird's eye view of Second Corinthians.